standard model of cosmology, the history of the universe, and its unexplained fine-tuning for life. I said before that science is sometimes seen as a, a challenge to faith, and the things that I'm talking about in these three things really, I think, are scientific results that are an encouragement to, to faith. Um, so, what do we know about cosmology, the history of the whole universe? That's really the initial subject for this evening. Um, <clears throat> The sun is a star, our nearest star, um, and it's one of billions of stars uh, in our galaxy, which is a, a large uh, sort of disc-shaped uh, arrangement of stars. So let's have, a, I think, to focus, let's have a very quick run-through of, uh, of the universe as it currently is. And these are diagrams um, of, of, of our of our universe. Distances are enormous. Um, generally measured in light years, uh, light travels, what, 300,000 uh, kilometers in a second, takes eight minutes to get to the sun, which is about 140 million kilometers away, takes four years to get to the nearest star. <coughs> so this little uh, thing here, that's, that's 10 light years. So this little diagram here is about uh, 20 light years across, and it contains the nearest stars. <clears throat> uh, about 30 stars within that range. But let's go on zooming out, first of all, by a factor of 20. And now, this picture includes most of the stars you can see <coughs> with the naked eye. Um, the uh, ruler there is now 100 light years. Um, you can't see uh, a quarter of a million stars, but there are something like a quarter of a million stars uh, in that volume. Go out another factor, and now we can begin to see the structure of our galaxy. There are, in fact, spiral arms, and our galaxy is in the Orion arm of, of, of the galaxy. So the sun is still right in the middle there. Um, you can now have 600 million stars in that area, but we're still only seeing a fraction of our local galaxy. Um, now go out another factor of 10, and there is the complete galaxy, something like 100,000 light years across, so vast distances, something like 200 million stars, and our star, our sun, is in the Orion arm. Let's go out another factor of, uh, of 10, and now you can see the local galaxies. It's not quite local in the sense of the co-op. Um, they're a little bit further away. Um, that is uh, one million light years. So we're now seeing out to within five million light years. You can see uh, a few galaxies in that area. Um, still seeing only a small fraction of the universe. Zoom out another factor of 20. And now we can see that galaxies are actually in clusters. Not only are stars in huge island universes, galaxies, but the galaxies themselves come in clusters. Um, so we can see, not too far away from us, the Virgo cluster of thousands of galaxies. So within this range now, we've got perhaps 200 trillion stars. Um, and there are thousands of galaxies, large galaxies, within that volume. Jump out the further factor of 10, and now we can see that even clusters of galaxies come in what are called superclusters. And in between these superclusters, there are what are called voids, areas where there isn't very much. We are now quite close to the whole visible universe, another factor of 14. And that is not necessarily the whole universe, but the whole visible universe. And on this, the largest scale, things are roughly uniform. The galaxies are scattered around in groups, in clusters, in superclusters, but on the very largest scale, they're roughly uniformly distributed, and the same in every direction. We've just drawn it in the middle, as though the sun was in the middle, but there ain't no middle, as far as we know. And there is something like 10,000 I think that's wrong, I think it's 10,000 million galaxies, not 10,000 billion galaxies. I think I made a mistake there. So, a quick, a quick run through the universe. 
three basic facts about the universe. First is it's quite big. Um, hard to conceive at all of these distances, but the universe is very large, thousands of millions of light years across. And light travels 300,000 kilometers in one second. So it is absolutely vast. Another thing about the universe is it's very old because we can actually see light which has been traveling from those distances. It's been traveling for thousands of millions of years. So the universe is very large, it's very old, and the third thing which isn't obvious from what I've said so, so far is that it's expanding. These galaxies are all flying apart from each other. Uh, the further ones are flying away faster than the nearer ones. It looks as though the whole universe exploded about 10,000 million years ago in a big bang. <clears throat> now, I'll find the right diagram. Um, how do we know that the universe is expanding? By measuring the spectrum of light from stars and from galaxies. On the top here, we have a spectrum taken from the sun, and it's got lines on it which correspond to particular elements in the sun that absorb light. So these are characteristic lines. Now, a spectrum from a, a distant galaxy, or in fact a cluster of galaxies, the same spectrum, but you can see it's shifted. The lines appear <laughs> further to the right, and it's shifted by what's called the Doppler effect. Um, you know, when uh, an ambulance goes towards you and away from you, it's dee 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 because the, light, the sound coming towards you and then the sound going away from you. This is light going away from us. And the reason that this <coughs> spectrum has been shifted towards the longer wavelength, the red end, the lower frequency end, uh, is that these galaxies are going away from us very fast, about 7% of the speed of light. Now, you measure that and you discover that the whole universe is expanding. The more distant galaxies are expanding, uh, going further from us than the close-up ones. Now, in the last 10 years or so, our knowledge of the history of the universe has become very, very much more precise. Things which were rough 10, 20 years ago are now we think quite precise. Our knowledge has become very, very much more precise, mainly because of better observations. There's a thing called WMAP, the Wilkinson Mic uh, Microwave Anisotropy Probe. There's the Hubble Telescope. There's the European Space Observatory. There are observatory, uh, observations I'll talk about, Type 1 supernovae. This and a whole lot of others have you know, a vast amount of very, very detailed observations have now come together so that we now have not only a standard model of particles, but what's called a standard <coughs> model of cosmology, which seems to agree with all observations. Now, here's just a picture taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. This is not our galaxy, it's another galaxy, but it's probably something that looks, would, our galaxy would look a bit similar to that, a big flat disk with spiral arms. You can see, by the way, two other galaxies which are just much smaller because they're a lot longer, further away. Um, here's another picture taken by <coughs> Hubble. This is the Hubble Deep Field, and the Hubble telescope spent some time <coughs> looking at a fairly small area of the sky for a long time. And the thing which is not obvious about this picture is that virtually all of these tiny spots are not stars, they are complete galaxies. In other words, we're looking deep into space at galaxies a very, very long way away. <clears throat> this, therefore, is a, a sort of rough picture um, of uh, what we now think about the universe. That it started with a very hot Big Bang, and time goes this way, and as it expanded, the galaxies began to form, and now they are further apart and moving apart from each other. So, a very, very rough picture of the history of the universe, starting in the Big Bang, then the formation of galaxies and stars and planets, and in the end, light. And life, I meant to say. What is the experimental evidence for this Big Bang? Is it just an idea? Well, no, it's actually quite strongly supported by detailed observations.
First of all, we look at the universe as it currently is and we see that it's expanding. <coughs> And when you apply the equations of Einstein's general theory of relativity, you can work out what must have happened in the past. If you like, work the equations backwards, uh, and they predict quite definitely that it started very hot and very small, very dense. Okay? Uh, the equations definitely predict that. And Einstein's general theory has been very well confirmed by lots of experiments. So, just the observed expansion Take it backwards, and it must have started with a hot Big Bang. But there are two other things, and I'll talk about them in detail. The cosmic microwave background radiation. You look out in every direction, and you see that light that was actually emitted when the Big Bang was very hot, like the surface of the sun, about 400,000 years after the Big Bang. And finally, the chemical composition of the, the earliest stuff that we can see, the oldest stars, it's actually just as the Big Bang predicts. Let's look at these three things in a bit more detail. Um, this is a plot, a graph of, if you like, redshift against distance. How fast the galaxies are going as you go further away. The ones at the top are fainter, and they are also got much more redshift. And this is a factor of 100 from there to there and about 100 from there to there. One of the problems of these experiments is that what you would like to have is a little standard light that you knew how bright it really was, and then how bright it appears will tell you how far away it is. Do you follow me? Um, problem is that if you just look at galaxies, it's not surprising that some of them are fainter than others. How can you tell which is further away? Well, these type 1 supernovae are a very particular kind of exploding star. Um, a supernova is an exploding star, and for a, a short time, an hour or so, it can shine brighter than a whole galaxy. There are different kinds of supernovae, and this particular kind, which can be recognized by its spectrum, we have good reason to believe that they are all about the same brightness. Do you follow me? So it's a wonderful thing to observe. It's very bright. You can see them a very long way away, and they are all the same actual brightness, so from their apparent brightness, you can work out how far away they really are. And that's where you get this really good straight line. That shows you over a factor of a hundred that the universe really is expanding. I'll come back to this because it reveals something else very surprising. The, the, the supernovae that are a hundred times further away, they are ten thousand times fainter, and they're moving away a hundred times faster. <clears throat> Now, the cosmic microwave. Microwaves in a microwave oven, they're like light, only they're much longer wavelength. Okay? And when we look up into the sky in all directions, we find a uniform radiation coming in. Coming in from everywhere at microwave frequencies, low frequencies. And it seems to correspond to what's called black body or thermal radiation. You can see how closely it corresponds. This Red, this green line is a theoretical curve for what's called a black body at 2.7 Kelvin above absolute zero. And these are the actual observations from a satellite. You can see that it's very, very precisely uh, thermal radiation. It's coming from everywhere. And what we now believe is that this is the evidence of the actual remnants of the Big Bang. It started off very hot. And it's the universe has been expanding ever since, which is why it's now at this wavelength rather than visible light. The third thing is this chemical evidence. When you look at the, the very earliest stars and see what they're made of, they're nearly all hydrogen, but about a quarter is helium, and about uh, one hundredth of a percent is deuterium, and even less is helium, three, and down here the tiny, tiny fraction of lithium. These numbers are very precisely fitted by what would have happened in a Big Bang, starting with that ratio of ordinary matter. If you start with a, a particular mixture, you finish up with, according to the theory, these chemical compositions of the earliest stuff. So this is what was happening in the first few minutes of the Big Bang, and we can not only say it agrees precisely with the Big Bang, but we can work out how much matter there was, how dense the matter was, 
related to light. So lots of, I don't know, these three good pieces of evidence that there's no other theory that predicts, like the Big Bang does, these observations. So, because of these three pieces of evidence, the observed expansion, the cosmic microwave stuff, and the chemical composition, astronomers are now all convinced that the Big Bang really did happen. All the competing theories, theories have been abandoned. Now, I've mentioned Einstein's general theory of relativity, which is really a theory of gravity. And that's what cosmologists use to calculate how the universe would have expanded. And the basic idea of Einstein's theory is that matter and energy affect the geometry of space, or space-time, around them. They curve it. You can calculate the sun affects the space around it, and that's why planets move in orbits and why even light gets bent as it goes past the sun. But it also applies to the whole universe, that the matter in the universe and the energy in the space, they both affect the space around them. 